Coming up on This Week in Torrance. Local authorities solve a murder mystery that dates back 47 years and tells us who killed 11-year-old Terry Lynn Hollis. Then we have details on how Torrance police are changing their coyote management plan. Plus, a local college expo helps students get prepared for the school year in many ways. And Torrance remembers the victims and heroes of 9-11 on its 18th anniversary with a special ceremony. We'll take you there. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks so much for joining us. Here are your top stories. A cold case investigation comes to a close as one Torrance family gets answers to the murder of 11-year-old Terry Lynn Hollis, who went missing on Thanksgiving Day 47 years ago. This crime is what nightmares are made of, and no family should ever have to go through such a tragedy. The Torrance Police Department released the name and image of the man identified as the suspected killer and rapist of the little girl who went missing on that November holiday. Hollis disappeared after leaving her home to go for a bike ride. Her body was found the next morning in Ventura County during the press conference held inside the Torrance Police Department. The identity of the suspect was announced as Jake Edward Brown. Family members in attendance included Hollis's siblings, various agency members, and companies that played a role in finding the suspect. Brown, who died in 2003 in Arizona, was also the suspect in two other rapes following Hollis's disappearance. The Torrance Police Department eventually took on the case and worked on it for several years and conducted more than 2,000 interviews. The sexual assault evidence collected by Ventura County Medical Examiner's Office was submitted to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department Crime Lab for DNA testing in 2000. Biological evidence from Hollis was submitted into various systems, but there were no hits at the time. Then, in 2015, Torrance Police Department was notified of a new technology by Parabon Nano Labs, a DNA technology company that specializes in advanced DNA services. Torrance Police used that technology to predict physical appearance and ancestry from unidentified DNA. Parabon was able to make trait predictions. A snapshot was produced in hopes of generating a lead. But a suspect was still not identified. Later, a genetic genealogy analysis linked a possible relative to the suspect. Officials used another company, DNA Labs International, who successfully extracted DNA evidence from Brown's bones and were able to confirm Brown's remains matched one in 20 septillion to the evidence collected from Hollis, Terry's older brother, Randy Hollis, who was 16 years old at the time, addressed the public. I only wish that my parents were still alive to see this. Um, obviously a lot was taken from us that day and throughout my life and I imagine Tammy's Thanksgiving Day um, always I always allow for a private moment um, to remember Terry. Um, we would like to thank the Torrance Police Department for their efforts um, towards finding this person. Um, this was a case that um, detectives would just not let get archived or let it go. Um, and they continued to follow up leads through all the years. Hollis said he thought this day would never come and that too much time had passed. Detectives who were originally on the case said it took three generations of detectives for this case to come to an end. But here we're not even getting justice. We're getting the third thing, which nobody really likes, which is just resolution. So yeah, we, we know how this we know how to resolve this. We know we know how to we can close it, but there's no closure in this closing, and that's one of the things that's the hardest thing about, like all these guys. We're all everyone's just glad that we know who it is, but there's also a sense in which you want to confront a killer, and bring that person to justice, Amen. and that is just not going to happen in a case like this. Tune in next week to hear the full story from detectives who worked on the case and family members. Well, the City of Torrance Fire Department held a wreath-laying ceremony to honor the victims and heroes of 9-11. This year marks the 18th anniversary of that fateful day. Jocelyn Ortega has a story.
The ceremony began just after 8 a.m. with honor guards raising a flag at half staff and a moment of silence, remembering those who lost their lives. I think the ceremony is nice. It's always nice to see everybody here at the department come together. It's a smaller department, it's a nice big family, and um, the kids love feeling like they're a part of it and feeling um, like we can all come together in a day like this and kind of make it turn into a positive. For third generation Torrance firefighter Jeremy Tresquez, it, it's a tradition he feels proud to be a part of. Well, I thought it was great. Um, obviously, I every time I do a ceremony for 9-11, you know, I think about the guys that and gals that we lost uh, at the World Trade Center. Um, always get emotional and always um, I'm so thankful for what they did, what they gave. And, uh, and yeah, it's just a good reminder. The ceremony was led by Fire Chief Martin Cerna, who gave a narrative read from one of the funerals attended by Torrance Fire Department members during their New York trip in 2001. He says holding annual memorials helps him fulfill his promise to serve the community. It's a part of us, and it's incredibly important for us not to forget our family, our friends, and those loved ones that sacrificed their lives. Nearly 3,000 people were killed during the September 11th terrorist attacks. More than 400 of those were first responders. Fire Captain Dennis Costello recalls the efforts of those who made the ultimate sacrifice that day. It was the greatest rescue in human history. And it's important for us as Americans that we pass that on and we never forget the courage that they displayed that day. A day in history that will be remembered for years to come. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Jocelyn Ortega. Thanks, Jocelyn. The Torrance Fire Department welcomes the community to attend and remember the victims as, they, as the city hosts this event every year on September 11th at 8 a.m. The Torrance City Council recently approved new plans to combat the coyote population in the city. Council members passed with a 6-1 vote to approve new updates to the coyote management plan. The amendments to the plan include establishing an annual five-month active trapping season between October and February. The $70,000 expense will go to Critter Busters to conduct a trapping program which includes the setup, maintenance, and daily checks of the 24 snares and two live traps. Next, they hope to trap coyotes in a geographical area rather than a problematic area, which allows for officials to work farther out than just the location of where a coyote was identified. Police Chief Eve Irvine said that snare trapping will not be placed anywhere it can be accessible to the public. They also plan to hire a part-time civilian staff assistant to oversee the coyote management program. Chief Irvine also talked about all of the ways Torrance police members have educated and enhanced outreach to the community, including the creation of a 24-hour coyote hotline. Another part of the agenda item was an explanation of an evaluation of potential environmental impacts that could occur from the proposed plan updates from an external environmental planning firm. It showed no substantial evidence that the project would have a significant impact. Community members had the opportunity to share their opinions. I will tell you in the area where we were having the most problems where I live, uh, the county came in, took out seven, seven or nine of them. It's been fantastic. We haven't had any problems. It's they didn't multiply. There's not 50 bazillion of them. It's actually peaceful, quiet. You don't see people walking around with sticks as often. It works. But it is our responsibility to take the proper precautions on a personal level to be sure the odds of these things happening are as small as possible. This is part of having a pet. Trapping and euthanizing a handful of coyotes for five or six months out of the year is not going to solve the problem. How do we know the ones that we trap and euthanize are the ones that are going to attack or kill a pet. You can catch the full meeting online. Go to torrentca.gov or head to our YouTube page. Torrance police are enhancing security measures and their lobby come after hours. Police Chief Eve Irvine says between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. there will be limited access to the lobby. While the front door will be locked, visitors can use the new intercom on the wall just outside the station for assistance. The intercom and 24-7 video surveillance will be directed to the communications division dispatch. In the case of an emergency, the intercom will serve as the immediate communication point. This new procedure will go into effect beginning Monday, September 16th. The South Coast Air Quality Management District Governing Board gave refineries the green light to step up safety measures. 
Despite many groups and community members asking the South Coast Air Quality Management District Governing Board to ban modified hydrofluoric acid, also known as MHF, representatives voted 8-3 to three to have refineries, including the Torrance Refinery Company, to enhance safety measures instead. The Torrance and Wilmington refineries both submitted letters to the SCAQMD before the recent meeting stating they would install improved safety systems. The air quality panel had some opposition saying it was now time to eliminate the risk while others said it wasn't. Business and labor groups have raised concerns that phasing out hydrofluoric acid would threaten jobs. To watch the meeting, you can head to SCAQMD's YouTube page. An upcoming business bringing a new concept to Torrance is looking to hire. The Brews Hall, a multi-concept brewery and food court, will be located adjacent to Delamo Fashion Center. Training begins early October, and they are looking to hire line cooks, prep cooks, cashiers, bartenders, barbacks, food runners, and back-of-the-house supervisors, to name a few. Comedian and actor George Lopez is partnering with South Bay restaurateur Michael Zislis for this new concept. On site, there will be multiple restaurants, including Lopez's Chingon Kitchen, Colin a cowherd's herd burger, chicken twilly, and rock and fish grill. A Torrance Public Works employee put his skills to the test at a national competition. Anthony Graham, a cement finisher for the city of Torrance's Public Works Department, competed in the American Public Works Association rodeo event at the MSA Trade and Training Show this past May. Graham tied for first place in the BACO operating event and was selected to represent Southern California at the APWA National Rodeo Competition in Seattle, Washington recently, where he was 39th out of 67 competitors from all over the United States and Canada. He was the best out of all the competitors from the SoCal chapters. Congratulations, the APWA sponsored Graham to go on this trip. The Torrance Rose Float Association is kicking off their 65th anniversary with a special event. On Saturday, September 21st from 1 to 4 p.m., you can stop by the Pine Wind Garden at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center for a Kodo performance by Yuki Yasuda, as well as a tea ceremony demonstration. The free event will celebrate the, si the city's 65th float called Our Garden of Hope and Dreams, which was inspired by the Pine Wind Garden. 32 high school students entered the 2020 float design contest. This year, Aaliyah Kang created the winning concept. The Torrance Rosefoot Association also kicked off another fun contest asking what they should name the turtle in the pond that will be on the Rose Parade float. You can submit multiple names. The deadline is November 1st. The winner will get two tickets to the association celebration dinner hosted the month following the parade. You can submit your name suggestion for the turtle at torrencerosefloat.org. Well, still ahead, the popular city pool gets a fresh look. We'll tell you how. Plus, you won't have to go far to get the best care for your furry friends. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks to the Torrance community. After 17 years, the aging mural at the popular community pool, the Victor E. Binstead Plunge, will get a fresh new look. Sarah Honeycutt tells us more. The Victor E. Benstead Plunge has been serving the community since 1956, and for 17 years the mural has captured the history of the people it serves. But soon it will be repainted to reflect a new era for the community. Kim Hubbard, aquatics program coordinator for the city of Torrance, says the original mural began to deteriorate over the years, and with that there were also other changes happening at the plunge. With the deterioration over the years, it just so happened that the Torrance Unified School District, who used to practice here, their new pool got built, and so they vacated the premises of the plunge, and they're now swimming at their new pool. So as they transitioned out, we actually reached out to the students of the Torrance Unified School District uh, for them to kind of give their input and to submit by a contest, a concept that they would be interested in seeing on the wall at the plunge. The winning concept was then handed over to artist Emily Brantley from Journey of Faith. The church donated $4,200 to help make the new mural come to life. Kids come, people of all ages come here and are served by this pool. So um, we just really want to feature that in the mural. And I know Journey of Faith also has that same spirit of serving the community. So it's really a great joint effort between city and church um, to come together and make this mural happen. 
South Bay local and full-time artist Emily Brantley was honored when asked to commission the mural. Brantley has created indoor murals and has other notable paintings displayed throughout the South Bay. This is her first large-scale outdoor mural. I hope they're just inspired by all the activities they do and you know it's going to feature people of all ages, people of all backgrounds, um, so hopefully everyone can kind of see a little bit of themselves in this mural. I'm just really honored to be here. This is an exciting opportunity for me. Brantley says it will take four days to complete the mural that will stand about nine feet tall and 30 feet wide. A new vision that will proudly reflect the plunge for years to come. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Sarah Honeycutt. Thanks, Sarah. Artist Emily Brantley has already started to work on the mural. To check out her progress, go to emilybrantleyart.com. Dogs are getting the full VIP treatment at Dogtopia, a modern dog care facility in Torrance. It's equipped with a spa, daycare, and boarding space. Reporter Jen Moreau was at the grand opening and has their story. Pup summer has never looked better for these canines. Owners gathered with their furry friends to get familiar with the newest doggy daycare in town. Kathy Miller, owner and operator of Dogtopia, opened in Torrance in hopes of giving dog owners more options on where to leave their furry friends. We've got three playrooms. We separate by size, temperament, and play style. So we've got the toy box for our littles, and we've got the romper room for our medium-sized, more active pups, and then the gym is for our big dogs. A safe place for dogs to eat, play, and board, temperament testing takes place for pups to feel comfortable in their personal doggy space. So every um, playroom is indoor and it's um, sterile, filtered air. Uh, we have rubberized uh, floors for paws, paws, hips, and joints, and bacon scented bubble machines in every playroom. We also have an app, a Dogtopia app, so that you can download and you can watch your pup play all day long in air conditioned beautiful, pristine facility. Canines at Play isn't the only advantage in this facility. Dogtopia offers a boarding space and full spa treatments. We have great offers. We've got monthly memberships and we have a spa. So we do um, baths, nails, teeth, blueberry facials. That's a plus too. It smells delightful. Dogtopia's first South Bay location invited local dog owners and vendors to join the celebration. Betty Vu is a Dogtopia customer. I think it's a great place to have uh, for your dogs. Um, you know, I have two dogs at home and sometimes they just need to be somewhere else besides the backyard and this um, Dogtopia is really great in terms of giving her a chance to play with other dogs, but it's indoors, so there's air conditioning, so it's probably a lot more fun than being in the backyard. Dozens of dog parents attended the highly anticipated social event. They got to enjoy the company of other dog owners and grabbed customized bandanas for their pups to wear. Smog City Brewery donated beer for the grand opening kickoff and Infinite Love Animal Rescue was there with two four-legged fur babies ready for adoption. With local vendors selling pup-friendly items to grabbing a tour of the Dogtopia facility. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Jen Marua. Thanks, Jen. For more information about Dogtopia services, you can visit their website at dogtopia.com. A free meet and greet offer is available for new customers, and all dog parents are encouraged to stop by and check it out. If you're looking to upgrade your home with new furniture or just need a fresh look, there is a new store that will help you do just that. <laughs> Excited customers lined up outside of the newest Ashley Furniture Home Store in Torrance, marking the 69th location on the West Coast. The store offered customers on opening day 45 to 50 percent off select pieces or a five-year financing plan and one lucky person received a $5,000 credit to the store. They are located on the boulevard in the Torrance Promenade Old Town Mall. Officials say they came to Torrance because of the demographics and are looking to serve the community. Ashley is the number one manufacturer of furniture in the world and number one retailer of furniture in North America. Ashley Furniture also works towards giving back to the community through special programs. We have a, um, a program called Hope to Dream 
which is our way of giving back to the communities uh, uh, where we do business. We had a great event last night in Dodger Stadium. We gave away over 100 beds to very deserving children in all of our areas in Southern California. Uh, corporately, Ashley's given away almost 90,000 beds in the eight years the program has been uh, in existence. So we're really excited to be part of that. Hope to Dream by Ashley Furniture. This is a great business to add to our city, a great resource for all of our citizens to come and, uh, and buy, pick up something new if they need to get some furniture for their homes. It's, uh, it's a great because I get to welcome businesses in the city of Torrance. It's the business community that brings in the revenue for the city. The brand was established in 1945 and in 2017 was named one of America's best employers by Forbes. They have one-of-a-kind home furnishing values, selections, and service. You can visit them online as well at ashleyhomestore.com. An active global lifestyle brand is bringing a new collaboration to its stores. Fabletics, located inside the Delamo Fashion Center, announced its second collaboration with singer and actress Kelly Rowland that combines her perspective as a performer and as a fashion icon. Rowland says this line will create silhouettes that are deeply personal and celebrate the female form. The apparel includes corset-inspired details accentuating the body in beautiful rouge tones and reversible jackets that serve as perfect transitional pieces. Fabletics was co-founded by actress Kate Hudson in 2013. It offers apparel sizes ranging from extra extra small to 3X. The fall collection will be sold in 10 countries and is available at fabletics.com. A torch company will soon launch an exclusive partnership with Los Angeles World Airports. Londi Renzo USA, the American subsidiary of Londi Renzo Group, announced a collaboration with Los Angeles World Airports, the airport authority that owns and operates LAX. The global leader in alternative fuel systems for the automotive industry will deploy Ford F-250-350 cars fueled by compressed natural gas used to support LAX's fleet operations. The cars come directly from the Ford manufacturing plant to Landy Renzo, USA's facility in Torrance, where they will be converted with the Landy Renzo's Eco-Ready CNG system. The company is the only approved Ford QVM developer for pickup trucks certified by California Air Resources Board. This is one step in continuing to reduce its emissions. More than two-thirds of LAX's fleet cars use alternative fuels, with 68% of these using CNG. Many college students struggle to meet basic needs such as food, clothing, and shelter as they strive to better themselves through education. Reporter Colleen Farewell paid a visit to the Student Support Expo at El Camino College and learned how the school is helping to alleviate these challenges for its students. Libby Corona is doing some back-to-school shopping, not at a store, but through a resource called the Warrior Closet, created to help students in need at El Camino College. Having a financial relief without ha like us not having to pay for clothes, so it's definitely a huge blessing. After meeting at a high school for at-risk youth, the young couple is working to create a better future for themselves their infant son CJ and two young daughters at home through their education. At the school's Student Support Expo, they learned about financial aid options and picked out clothing for future job interviews, two resources that will allow Libby to keep her eye on pursuing her dream of becoming an immigration attorney. The goal of today's Student Support Expo is to remove barriers to education so students can focus on what's important learning. This year we wanted to emphasize the non-academic needs so having those issues addressed here in this space really allows us to be able to helping the student holistically as opposed to just uh, transactionally. Sparked from that trend was the brainchild of El Camino's youth and homeless liaison Sharonda Barksdale. Came across more homeless students than I imagined were on campus. Um, one of the challenges for a lot of those students was that they were looking for employment but could not afford to purchase a suit or a button-down shirt or a pair of slacks, things like that. This was just an idea that I was like, okay, I'll get a few suits for some of the students I'm working with, and it grew to having probably close to 20 racks of clothing now. Along with the closet's pop-up shop, 
the expo offers solutions to age-old student concerns, such as financial aid, tutoring, and transferring, but also another growing problem hindering student equity, access to affordable and sufficient food. Over 33 percent of our students um, actually reported that they face low to very low food security. To address the issue, Special Services Professional Erica Suhu helped distribute food donations to students through Warrior Closet Sister program, the Warrior Pantry. Just this past spring semester, um, our goal was, I believe, um, 300 students. We exceeded that goal uh, and actually served 737 students. Students capped off the event with a free box lunch and a side of relief, ready to hit the books minus the fear of where their next meal will come from. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Colleen Farrell. Thanks, Colleen. If you would like to make a monetary donation to the El Camino College Foundation to support the Warrior Closet or Warrior Pantry, visit elcamino.edu and search Warrior Pantry. September is Pedestrian Safety Month, and the Torrance Police Department is partnering with law enforcement agencies across California to promote safe behaviors that allow drivers and those on foot to get to their destination safely. Just this year, there were three pedestrians killed and 25 injured in crashes here in Torrance. To reduce the amount of collisions, Torrance Police will have additional officers patrolling the city and focus on drivers and pedestrians who violate traffic laws. Some violations include speeding, driving, or walking distracted, and not checking for drivers or pedestrians who have the right-of-way. Torrance police officials suggest pedestrians look left, right, and then left again before crossing the street. Watch for cars turning, obey traffic signs, and always avoid distractions. Make eye contact with drivers and never assume drivers can see you. Pedestrians should always walk on the sidewalk. If there isn't one, walk on the shoulder facing traffic and as far away from cars as possible. Officials say drivers should always follow the speed limit because the higher the speed, the longer it will take to stop. Look out for pedestrians, avoid blocking the crosswalk when attempting to make a right turn, and be careful parking and maneuvering through busy shopping centers with heavy foot traffic. We all need to be more careful and pay more attention to what's sure going on. All Absolutely. of us, all of us. And before we go, let's check in with Leslie Robbins. Leslie, what do you have for us? What's up, Jin and Ben? Coming up on the sports desk, football week two is officially in the books. We've got all the highlights, getting you caught up on volleyball, golf, water polo, and tennis. Plus, what the kids did on their summer staycation, sports camp. That and a Torrance alum makes his MLB debut. That plus so much more. Please watch every day at 4 and 9.30. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Leslie. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jin Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.